we got a big weekend coming up with UFC 300 right around the corner. We have matchups set to make history in the octagon. This is one you do not want to miss. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook and we're gonna bring you closer to the action. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings app right now. Sign up using my code SUNDAY. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Stay in on the action and use your bets for DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight, including total rounds and method of victory. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win bigger prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers sign up using the promo code SUNNEN. Bet just $5 and you will get 150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SUNNEN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, let me give you a WrestleMania recap and... There's a lot of moving parts, right? Like, my recap is, is going to be negative. But that's how I'm happy. Like, like as a fan, I don't go in very often to cheer. I go in to boo. So, I'm always trying to critique it. I'm trying to think of how it could be better. So, I, I offer you that because... I mean, the show was, was excellent. I, I give it two thumbs up, even if I'm going to critique things and tell you where there was misses and how it could be better. I give it two thumbs up. But it, it, it can always be tough when the guys in the business don't understand the business. Now, I, I got to deal with this on an absolute daily basis in MMA. We have people in all organizations that have been in the business at an executive level for 20 years and they don't know why the sport works. We have people that will leave the sport and then and then go to the media and talk about the sports only in this position because of what I did. They didn't see it. They fired me, but I'm the one that got them here. And they really believe it. Like they're not being jerks. They truly believe it. They do not know why the sport sustains. All right. Before I go down that road, I'm sharing for you, when you see the fellow wrestlers and when you see these guys in top positions that don't understand what they're doing, like if you have your, your choice between mastering the psychology of the fan or mastering the sport, being like Bret Hart, the excellence of execution, Shawn Michaels, you know, that's just a really good wrestler, Seth Rollins, really good technical wrestlers, you're much better to understand the psychology. They say Hogan didn't know the difference between a wrist lock and a wrist watch. And while that's meant to be catchy, to a degree, it's true. Like, he went out there and made it look like a fight. Wasn't doing high flyer techniques and letting the sport win him over. He stood his ground. He stayed in his lane. He made more money than anybody. So, I mean, I watched Cody Rhodes last night. And there were so many things that they did very well. Like, if you want to know the, the, the single greatest decision... It was The Undertaker, right? The Rock has to come out on night two. There's no way around it. You are irresponsible if you have The Rock there and you don't bring him out. Now, on the other side of it, The Rock's time is done. Whatever deal The Rock made so that he got to be the one that did the one, two, three, he's done it. Now, he's got to give somebody else the shine. But he's very unlikely as a veteran to give the shine to one of the young guys. So what do you do? There's only a few people that can give The Rock a bump and I don't just mean that the people are going to accept me and us. I mean that The Rock's going to agree to. You could have had Stone Cold do it. Yeah, a lot of ego involved there. Going to have a hard time getting it done. Could not have Hogan do it. Couldn't have Goldberg do it, just for example. Undertaker. It was perfect. That's exactly the guy. I have never... From my vantage point of an outsider looking in, I have never seen a wrestler more respected by wrestlers than The Undertaker. So it was just a great, it was, it was just great to deal with that. You get your time in there with The Rock and then you gotta explain how The Rock gets the hell out of there, boom. They did it. So 
when the when the main event is done, and you gotta understand how bad this match was. I mean, I understand these two guys are tired. I, I kind of get a little of that X, Y, and Z, but this match was rotten garbage. 14 minutes in, I put out a tweet. They said there is no explanation or justification as to why this match is so bad. That was 14 minutes in. Now, let me tell you what I saw 14 minutes in. I saw two guys do a slapstick. If you go back and you watch that match, you did not have a wrestling match. You didn't have anything that resembled a wrestling match. Now, I understand there's a difference between entertainment and professional wrestling. And I also understand that, that I am much closer to a Jim Cornette in appreciating professional wrestling but it is supposed to look like a fight, not a cooperation and not something that's silly. I fought 51 men professionally. I have never been thrown into a ring post. I have never been in jeopardy of being tossed into stairs. Ain't nobody clearing off a table because they're gonna put me over the top of it. And while I know that all of that is part of the entertainment era. And while I, I know that corner posts and stairs and tables have a place, for sure. It was all that they did in the first 14 minutes. All that they did was crappy spots and then slapstick, right? Slapstick's not cool. Slapstick, you guys know what that means? You, you, you're, there's a rake laid down. You step on the rake and it, it brings the handle of the rake up and hits the guy in the face. Like, that's slapstick. And this is what they're doing. In a world title match... On the biggest night of the year, you got these two J-Brones that are 14 and a half minutes in. Neither one of them has broken a sweat. Then I had fans telling me, hey, Chael, calm down. There's another 45 minutes to fill. It'll it'll get better. And the, they were telling me this on social media. And I'm looking at it, I'm going, that's the point. We know that there's another 45 minutes to fill. They've let the fourth curtain down. We understand what a window is. We understand the time that they're going off air. We understand this is the last thing of the night. Like, yes, I know there's 45 minutes left, but 14 minutes in with no sweat and nothing but slapstick, Roman had covered Cody three times and Cody had covered Roman three times. That's the problem. There's 45 minutes left. And these guys are covering back and forth as though we, the audience, believe we're gonna get to a three count. With no interference, with no rock, with no run-ins, it was just, it, that's garbage. When the match ends, they go into a very organic and unscripted moment. Now, real magic can take place in those moments. Like, I'm not saying that's not a risk that should have been avoided, but it should have been a mitigated risk. You, you, Cody was not in that spot because of the rock. Cody was not in that spot because of Bruce Pritchard and Triple H. Cody was not in that spot because of the blonde hair, because of the reality TV show. I mean, I could go on and on. Cody was in that spot because of you. You, 100%. You, the fans, not only lifted Cody up to put him over, you had to pull the rock down in the process. That's just not how the sport's done. We are all happy, whether you're cheering or booing the rock, we are all happy when he's there. The event is bigger and the event is better when The Rock is there. But for you to put Cody where you knew that he deserved to be, you also had to give a bump to the biggest star of the event, and you did it. So when Cody wins and he brings out Triple H, when, when he wins and he brings out Bruce Pritchard, Bruce Pritchard, you have two powerful executives that are both multimillionaires. And that is who Cody thought he should thank in that moment. I mean, I, I must tell you, like you, the audience are going to hate Cody and Cody is going to go heel. Now, that's just the life of the business. But that began last night and that was real Cody. That was an organic moment. There's no mark here. There's no, none of those things happening. That was a real moment. And those are the two people that he thought that he should thank. Now he gave a little bit of shine to his mom, which was nice. He said and did some of the right things, which was nice, but it was a massive disconnect from reality. And for us as viewers to watch wrestling and to understand that we must suspend reality. Yeah, I, I got the great quote down. 
from three decades ago. What, what I'm sharing with you is we also expect our wrestlers to fully understand what's happening. The Rock was late to the party. It was a surprise. The Rock was late to a party, not understanding the fans were not going to back him on this one. The fans had already made that clear through social media and a taping. The Rock didn't get it until he was live on stage at the press conference in Las Vegas. I mean, the true person. The, the, the Dwayne Johnson did not understand that the crowd is not going to cheer him until that moment. And Cody, in a real moment, to thank Triple H and Bruce Pritchard, as opposed to you who put him there. It was a massive slap in the face. It, it was a blunder and it was a mistake. Great. Blunders and mistake happens all the time. Use them. But you got to use it to go heal. And whether Cody, I mean, Co Cody hasn't known which way this is going to go from Jump Street. The Rock hasn't known which way this is going to go. Neither has Triple H or Bruce Pritchard. Nobody knew that you, the fans, were going to step up and be heard to this degree. And I'm just not positive that Cody is aware. His heel turn has already began. As soon as he had his moment to stand back and say thank you, he did not thank you.